This is KXP FM Seattle, all around the world at kxp.org. I'm Greg Vandy, and we're in the Roadhouse with Dory Freeman. Blood from 
If I Could Make You My Own and Lovers on the Run from the latest record from Dory Freeman called Letters Never Read. Dory Freeman, great to have you here. Thanks for coming. Yeah, thank you for having me. We finally made this happen. Yep. It, it took a while. It took a while, but it's, it's yeah. good. It's happening I today. Really appreciate you coming here. Yeah, thank you for having me. I really am still loving your record from last year. Uh, you called it Lever- Letters Never Read, mm-hmm. and I'm wondering why did you call it that? Well, it's a line from Lovers on the Run, and um, we just we tossed around a few ideas for what to call the record, but I kind of thought that um, that was a good title for just, like, love songs that you write for people, or not even necessarily love songs, but just songs that you write for different people and, and things in your life, and um, the fact that most of the time people that you write about don't necessarily know that that song is about them. So we decided to call it Letters Never Read. Great. And this is your second record. Yeah. You had another record self-titled the, the year before. And so you've had two records. Are there records before those? Or? There are. There's but... a recordings, right? <laughs> yeah. There, there are a couple um, like self-released recordings that I did when I was 18 and 19. Yeah. Um, but they're hard to get your hands on. Yeah. Because I don't want anybody to hear them. <laughs> <laughs> One aspect about you that uh, a lot of people latch on to is the producer of the record, which is Teddy Thompson. Sure. Who is the son of Richard and Linda Thompson, yep. kind of folk rock icons. And uh, there's a great story about how you got involved with Teddy. Can you tell us that? Yeah. Um, so a few years ago, I, I just sent them a message on Facebook with like me singing one of his songs and said, um, I'm a big fan and I would love to work with you in any capacity um, and didn't really think that he would re- respond, but I got lucky that he, he did actually write back, um, I guess, within a week or so. And that sort of turned into um, a few conversations on Facebook and then emails. And then he called me on the phone and um, offered to produce the record. So, wow. How cool is that? Yeah. It was yeah. a very cool experience. What song of his did you sing to him? Uh, Everybody Move It. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. And did you say, hey, by the way, I'm from the breadbasket of traditional American music <laughs> down here in Galax, Virginia? Did you no, say I didn't joke? say that, but I mean, I think the accent kind of gives you it could away. Tell. So, yeah. yeah. You're from Galax, Virginia, which is a very small community in yeah. Virginia. It's kind of right there where North Carolina, Tennessee, Kentucky, West Virginia all meet. It's sure. just Appalachia pretty much. Yeah, it's kind of at the heart of the, the Appalachian music scene. Yeah, and it's kind of where it all begins. Yeah, I mean, Galax is is known for the big fiddlers convention that happens every year in August, and it's been going on for going on 90 years now. So mm, it's, it's one of the oldest. Yeah, huh? it's one. I think it's the oldest, actually. Yeah. And uh, so instead of sort of like a normal person who have rejecting your, you know, your parents thing and your grandparents thing, you totally embrace it. Yeah, I do now. I mean, I, I definitely, did at one point, I definitely went through a period when I was a teenager where I was listening to, you know, like a lot of crazy music that was different than what I grew up listening to. But yeah, as I've gotten older, it's become really important to me. And um, I mean, my dad and my grandfather both still play music regularly, so it was, it was hard not to 
be around it and kind of fall in love with it. Right. So music's in your family. It's always been. Yeah. Your father plays and your grandfather plays. Actually, the next song we're going to hear is written by your grandfather. That's right. Yeah. Uh, so when you grew up, there was just music all the time. You'd always just sing for yeah. each other. Like, I mean, kind of the way it's always been for, I mean, generation after generation, people singing for each other than for careers. Yeah, absolutely. It's more um, in that part of the world. It's more just like a, a family tradition sort of thing where everybody just sits around and trades songs and sings and plays with each other. Yeah. When did you decide to go pro? Like a lot of folks, like you just mentioned, they just do it because they want to do it. And then at one point you decided, I'm going to make this something. Well, it's kind of the only thing that I'm good at. So <laughs> I think that was a big deciding factor for me was maybe I'll pursue this for a few years and yeah. see if it turns into anything. And um, so far it's been, it's been good. I've been able to make a living doing it. So Well, you got that voice. Thank you. At what point did someone tell you that you got a great voice? At what point? Yeah. I don't know. Did someone tell you that or just, did you just know it? I mean, people have told me that, but I don't, I don't think that that was, that was ever the catalyst for why I chose to do it um, professionally. I just really enjoy doing it. I love yeah. to play music. I don't really like to play in front of people, but I do love to play music. Yeah. <laughs> well, you got a certain purity to your sound that's just really refreshing. I think people respond to that and Thank sort you. of sort of resonates with people. Do you want to do another song? This is the yeah. one from the latest record, yep. and it's the one that your grandfather wrote. Yeah, he wrote it um, about a couple of bachelors, as my grandfather likes to say when he tells the story, uh, that lived together in eastern Kentucky. And uh, they apparently had this dog that would jump out and try to bite people when you walked by the house. So my grandfather wrote a song about it. Let's hear it. Cool. This is Dory Freeman. <laughs> Oh, the night was black as pitch When I'd give my girl a kiss And go whistling up the hill Back to my place It was just a mile or two And the Appalachian dew Would hang heavy in a mist upon my face I learned the mud holes and the ditches The shortcuts and the fences I could even cross old Elk Fork on a log but what I always feared the most, more than old Dark Holler's ghost, was earning Zori sneak and biting dog. I wish they'd tie him up, that dreaded rascal pup. I'd be happy as a king upon a throne. I'd go walking bravely by with a twinkle in my eye and whistle Mountain Dew on my way home. On the weekends I would go to the moving picture show With my friends across the hill at Carve and Glow Back through the darkness of the pines after watching Frankenstein We lost no time in finding our way home We learned the mud holes and the ditches The shortcuts and the fences We could even cross old Elk Fork on a log but what we always feared the most, more than old Dark Holler's ghost, was earning Zori sneak and biting dog. I wish they'd tie him up, that dreaded rascal pup. I'd be happy as a king upon a throne. I'd go walking bravely by with a twinkle in my eye and whistle Mountain Dew on my way home. Oh, and whistle Mountain Dew on my way home. Earn and Zori's Sneakin' Bitin' Dog by Dory Freeman. Thanks for being here, Dory. Yep. You got two other guys here. Can you introduce this band? Yeah. Um, on drums, I've got Nicholas Falk with me. And playing electric guitar is Eli West. Eli West, the hired gun. Yeah. Good to have you here, Eli. Uh, good to be here, Greg. It's Thanks. been a very long time. Yeah. Eli from Seattle, Washington. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Hometown. So your grandfather wrote that song, and I have on good authority you're going to record some more with your grandfather. Yeah, that, right? yeah. In um, mid March, um, the guy that produced my record, Teddy Thompson, and um, my manager and a, another guy are going to come down to Virginia, and we're going to make a record of all his original songs. How cool is that? Yeah, it's going to be really fun. I bet he's pretty excited about that. He's very excited. Yeah, he keeps. He's been asking me a lot um, about dates because we didn't have a solid date until recently, and he would mm -hmm. just ask me every time I saw him. So he's he's pretty excited. Yeah. 
You know, I, I would imagine your family's pretty proud of you, this sort of sudden I rise. So. I mean, you're being recognized uh, by a lot of great uh, uh, folks. You know, you're sort of out there and, and a lot of accolades for the last two records. Yeah, I hope I hope they're proud. I think they are. I know my grandfather is because he, he knows about articles and things before I do. He'll call me and be like, did you see this oh, article nice. that they posted about you? So right. It's pretty cute. Nice. And I know you have a four-year-old, so yes. I bet it's difficult to get out there on the road. Yeah. It, I mean, it definitely makes touring a lot more challenging to have a kid, especially one that's not in school yet. And um, yeah, I mean, it's it's a challenge, but I've been able to make it work over the last couple of years. And it's especially nice when we play things that are you know, within the state or close by that we can bring her to and festivals and that sort of thing. Yeah. Well, that's sort of what happened on the video you made to If I Can Make You My Own, the, the single to this new yeah. record. It's a pretty much a video of you and your daughter. Pretty much, At yeah. the Old Fiddler's Convention yep. in Galax. You guys are just kind of hanging out, doing your thing and kind of jamming in the grass with, uh, with yeah. the guitar. Yeah, my manager actually just shot all that on his iPhone and we just kind of compiled it together and turned it into a little video. Nice. So. Now, is the country fair aspect the same thing? Is there a sort of a country fair with rides and whatnot at the Old Fiddler's Convention? No, there's no rides or anything, but it does have the, like, the food element that okay. you would have at a fair. You, yeah. you know, you've got, like, funnel cakes and yeah, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, straight from Feltz Park. Yeah, Feltz Park. In Galax, yeah. That's right. Now, were you, did you do that last year? Yeah, it was that last was, August. So it was right after you got back from Pickathon. Yes, yeah. It was right after or right before? When I think was it was Pick-a-thon? right after. I think it was the... Uh Okay. The six was the old fiddlers. I think Pickathon was right before that. I was okay. I was eating lunch right behind you at Pickathon. Oh really? We were watching <laughs> Anna and Elizabeth together. Okay, cool. Yeah. Right on. Didn't know you yet. Yeah. But yeah. Well, thanks for coming. Do you want to do another song? This is my yeah. favorite song uh, from the record. Cool. And can you tell me how you came about writing this song? It's it's about depression, from what I can gather from the lyrics. Yeah, that's that's pretty much all you need to know. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I struggle with depression and anxiety on a daily basis. And um, I I don't know, I think it's important to write about that sort of thing. I think it's helpful. I like to listen to music that people have written about their personal experiences with that sort of thing. Um, And it really helps me cope with it as well. So that's kind of the perspective I had when I wrote this song. Yeah, a lot of people, uh, I think, do uh, sort of feel the same way you do. So let's let's hear what you say about it on this song. It's called Cold Waves, and it's from Letters Never Read. This is Dory Freeman. Baby. 
by Derry Freeman from her latest record called Letters Never Read. Lovely song. Thank you. Thanks for doing that yeah. one. And kind of a tasty feel by Eli West yeah. on that song. Yeah, it's nice. We usually play a duo, so it's nice to have a trio thing yeah. going on today. Yeah. Can you stay a little bit longer? I got some more questions for you. Sure. I, I know we're wrapping things up here, but I wanted to ask you um, about your haircut after the video, or actually, you know, the record came out. Right, 2016. I had long hair. You had like mid-length hair. Yeah. You know, and then the You Say video, which is like the best song from the first album. You have like really, really short hair. What's up with that? I I think I um I had seen some posts like on social media that where other mothers and women had done similar things, like um kind of just like as an example for your daughter that you know your hair doesn't mean everything and it's going to grow back, and it's different for men. Like you know, you guys don't have to really think about your hair as often as women do. So I just wanted to kind of know what that was like. And honestly, it took a lot of pressure off because you just don't have to worry about it anymore. And, you know, when you want it back, all you have to do is decide to grow it back. So it's really, it's not that big a deal. It's just hair. Yeah. So that's why I did it. And I've done it a couple times, actually. So I'll you, probably do it one another day. <laughs> well, you wear <laughs> it well. Now. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, look good on you. Would you mind doing one more song? I know it's sort of unscripted. Sure. Um, I want to ask you one more th- question before you play the song, though, which is sort of about this whole question of how you're steeped in American traditional music and culture, being from Galax, and you really, you know, represent that. Yet at the same time, you're really sort of a modern twenty-something person, like everyone else is. So, what is it about that stereotype, being from Appalachia, that you either embrace or fight against? Well, I mean, I definitely fight against the stereotype. I think, um, yeah, I mean, there are very specific stereotypes that are some for some reason acceptable to make fun of people from that part of the country, and I feel like. Um, I feel like it's one of the only parts of the country that's still acceptable to make fun of an entire group of people in that way. Um, and yeah, so I just, I want to play like the music that I grew up listening to and the music that, that the region is known for, but I also want to kind of evolve it and make it a little bit more, um, accessible to people that have this idea of what they think it sounds like. They think it's all like, you know, twangy banjos and yodeling and whatever it else that, you know, that people have this idea that it is. So I think... My my goal is to just, um, you know, write music from the heart and, and try to give people a new perspective right. on that yeah. kind of music. And I wouldn't call your record an Appalachian record really at all. No, I mean, I, mean, you, I wouldn't either. There's all kinds of styles on the record. Yeah. Yeah. Would you mind doing one more song? Sure, we can do one it's more. It's great to have you here. This is yeah. Dory Freeman. What are you going to do? I guess we'll do Just Say It Now. Is that cool? Did you, is that cool? Okay. I wish that loving didn't have to be so hard You hold my lily hand but only feel the scars And now I'm falling apart at the seams And without warning you've invaded all my dreams Just say it now before the silence makes me cry From the beginning I knew you would say goodbye 
Say It Now by Dory Freeman from the album Letters Never Read. Dory Freeman, thank you so much for coming all yeah. this way to be here today. Thank you for having me. This is KEXP FM Seattle. Discover new music at listener-powered KEXP.org.